Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of the Buy Round interview show. Now, today on the show, we're joined by uh, a very special person to me. Um, someone who I've played against, played with, and somebody who uh, every time um, I would sing the national anthem, we'd be right next to each other. So side by side. Side by side. Yeah. Um, not quite in the headlock. I've been in the headlock. <laughs> Close. Away from the field, but that nice and tight yeah, in while yeah. we're singing the anthem, none other yeah. than John Bateman. Yep. Cheers, mate. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Good been be uh, been great to be here. I, I, Batty, I, I loved um, our time in England together when we'd be stood side mm. by side and you'd make a beeline. You'd be, one side of you would be me, one, the other side of you would be Elliot White. Yep. And I, I, I felt safe next year. I really did. Um the headlock away from the field. <laughs> Punish. That's, that's, that's one of those. I like it though. Like, that's, even, <laughs> that's one of those where you're like, all right, John, you let me go. I'm not, the, I'm not the only person to sort of quietly away from you complain about the, the John Bateman yeah. grip. I think people make a more of it than what it is to the <laughs> Well, you've never been in it. Of course, I can't remember it. So. Yeah. Well, mate, yeah. I, um, I think the last time I was in it would have been... Uh, the 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 2001 Rugby League World Cup. I was over there doing some some punditry. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. went for a beer after the game. You did doing a cup you, Sheffield, right? and, and in Sheffield, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've gone for a beer and I've, I've seen yeah. Both and each other. and <laughs> it, I, I thought it's not going to be long yet. <laughs> It's, uh, and it, you can't talk and it, and, it, and it wasn't long before I was in there I, think it, I thought you were the only person that enjoyed it too because <laughs> you get one back and then it was one of them it was like you were thinking about coming over to the NRL and you were yeah, we were in like a bit of a bar it was loud yeah. and you're like I'm going to go out people thought we were arguing didn't like they? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm there looking up like <laughs> Batty can we, can we talk about this maybe let's go for a coffee <laughs> no no <laughs> um, how's how's things settling in obviously You've been at the Tigers for a year now, uh, but a lot of change. How's um, how, how have you found that the, the change? How are you going with that? Yeah, um, I think it's changed for the good to a fair amount. I think obviously what's happened this year, I think it was good, good for the club. I think where we wanted to go. I think it's just a fresh start. I think I think obviously Benji coming in, fresh ideas, coaching staff coming in, fresh ideas, and new players coming in. So that's a been a big thing for us. I think where the club's been in the last couple of years, I think it's got a bit stale. I think for where we want to go now, I think that's a big thing of what we want to do and stuff like that. And it's just brought a new, fresh idea into the club. Yeah, and obviously, like Benji's story, it's 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 pretty unique. Like, mm. there's not many people get this pathway to coaching that that he has. Obviously, a legend at the club. Um, came in, I think it was a five-year deal at first, two years assistant, yeah, like three-year head coach. But that's been fast tracked early. Do you, is he? Is he looking to to people like you to to help drive it? Because obviously the experience, he's not experienced in this position. It's all new for him. Is he really leaning on on people like yourself? Yeah, I think obviously, I think last year spending the year we had with Benji, I think you realised pretty quickly like that obviously how good of a coach he is and obviously understands the game. I think obviously people say he's not got the experience, but the only way you get experience is by doing doing the job. I think. Um, He's put himself around obviously some good people as well, which ob obviously helps him obviously in the coaching staff area. And like I said, for player wise, I think being a senior player, it's, it's your job anyway to obviously lead by example on the training field and the, and the pitch. But whenever the coach needs, needs you to pass a message on or they don't want to sound like a broken record, I think it's good for to come from the players every now and then, obviously. And I think it helps massively for the younger blokes to understand, obviously, and listen to the older players, which is a, which is a good thing. Yeah, well, you're obviously very influential. <clears throat> you let your, you know, your, your rugby or your footy do the talking. Um, I guess in any club, you you don't really want distractions. I think at the Tigers, there's been distractions. It's been not necessarily what's happening on the field. It's stuff away from the field in terms of um, some of the people in the front office. Have you noticed much change? in that is or is it is that out of sight out of mind I can only focus on on doing what I do on the field has there been any any chatter or, or, or much change in the mindset with, in regards to that um, I think it I think personally obviously I think it's a chat between the lads and um, 
Richo came in the other week and just said concentrate on his job, on our job, and that's our, our job is to play rugby, and I think that's the main thing, the main focus for the club to affair people concentrating on their own job and going about their job the way they need to go about, and I think you're not there to do someone else's job if you are, you'd be in that, in that seat, wouldn't you, to do that, so I think that's the main thing for us, just to focus on what we need to do and focus on what we can do, really, and make a difference in doing. Do you, do you think you'll benefit from perhaps less distraction away from the field, though? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, like, some obviously I can't speak for previous years, but sometimes last year we were having to answer questions that we didn't even have a clue what was going on. Yeah, like so you yeah, get you know called I mean? up on your media day. Yeah. And it's like Lee or, or, or Justin. W mm. What are your thoughts? And you're like, well, yeah, we didn't have a clue what was going on to the fair, obviously, because it had come out from somewhere else. And like, like I said, it's where where they play play the game at the end of the day, and where they train and get wins, and obviously that didn't help last year because we we weren't winning many games, so it compounds obviously everything together and it causes bigger distraction. But I think that's our main focus is training, having a good pre season under his belt, going out in the trials, getting some, getting some good good work into us, and obviously going out and winning some games. Yeah, nice. Well, we're here now. Um, you're in Australia. You're living in the inner west of of Sydney. <laughs> yeah. One of the most sought after cities in the world, but um, living the dream, dream job, professional rugby league player, professional athlete. But take us back to the streets of Bradford, John. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what life was like um, f for you growing up? Because it's very different from the, the life that you live now, isn't it? Yeah. I think, like I said, you, you pinch yourself sometimes, obviously, living in Sydney and whatnot, obviously living in the area I'm living now but I think going back home I think home will always be my home like that's where I grew up that's that's a place what I love and like everyone always says oh you love Bradford you know I'm like yeah that's that, <laughs> you know what I mean that, that's a place where I grew up and yeah I suppose going back to when I was younger it was good it was fun I enjoyed it you know what I mean I enjoyed, I enjoyed going away I'd never changed the way I grew up for anything else to be fair mate that's that is who I am that's made me what I am today and the ways that I am you know what I mean um it was tough probably at times, obviously, finding your way through life and finding out what, what, you, what you wanted to do and, and whatnot. Obviously, I, I was never the best at school. Um, got got dyslexia, so I struggled in that area. So for me, it was about probably just getting out of lessons as much as I could and just doing what I wanted, really. And probably before about were playing rugby, I think that was a big thing for myself and getting out getting out and just enjoying myself because that's what I enjoyed doing the most. I think, um, obviously, growing up in, in the area as well, there were quite a lot of crime and stuff like that as well obviously growing, growing up where I grew up and you've pop, I suppose you get dragged into it obviously growing up and being in the area your mates do stuff and, and whatnot so I think that, that's a big thing but like I said it, it moulded me into the person I am today and I, I never changed that for anything yeah. Were you when, when you look back are you like really grateful for the sport of rugby league to to help you be the, the best version that John Bateman can be 100% uh, like, w w yeah. and I, I guess probably what I'm looking at it's <clears throat> it's not about like the the people you grow up with because not too dissimilar. But was, was there a lack of opportunities for young lads yeah, in, in Bradford? Yeah, it's like I said, it's tough. It's tough to make some of yourself, if I'm honest with you. Like no disrespect to obviously where I grew up and that, but it's tough to get out of where where we where we, where we're born and bred. You know what I mean? Obviously, people in the area will just probably. Will, get normal jobs and go about the business and probably just stay in, stay in the city of Bradford and probably don't do much with yourself. So I think to get out of there and obviously make something of yourself and do something yourself. And like I said, now living living the dream, doing something doing something as a start as an hobby, something that my me, me mum and dad put me into to try and take me anger out on, you know what I mean? Try to get rid of a bit of frustration. Is that, is that what it was? You, yeah, pretty you much. Folks yeah. Were like, you got to play. Yeah, just get me, get me. Me and my brother used to fight a lot. My brother's three years older than me. And he, three years older than me. And he played and my mum used to always say, you go, go play. And I'm like, nah, yeah, you, you just call it shit and everything. <laughs> like, I just see you say it. Like he's a, he was a mad Bradford fan when we were younger. My grandma was. They go watch games and I'm like, I'm not going to watch that shit. Like, I'm like, yeah, oh, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, up until about eight, I think it was. And I'm just like, like Mum said, like, like she, like I used to fight with my brother a lot. So she was like, right, I've had enough. You going? You playing? And just went from there. Really enjoyed tackling, enjoyed like running into people, and yeah, just, it just, I suppose my love for the game grew. And yeah, I think what rugby's given me is, is massive, obviously, in my life, and obviously. It's, set me up for obviously but I've got two kids now I've, my girlfriend she's from Canberra I've never met her and stuff like that. I've been here to travel the world go to places that I never thought I'd 
Yeah, Gorton. Yeah, I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, well, mate, you, I'm glad that you, your parents did throw you in because you won a hell of a player. Um, and, you know, at, at one stage, no doubt about it, the best back row on the planet. But um, you start to make a name for yourself um, coming through. You become England Academy captain mm. um, and you come and tour over here. What, what are your memories from that tour? Yeah, <clears throat> to build up to, to it, I, I made my debut for Bradford. I think I made a couple of games for Bradford and, and whatnot. And probably myself, being where I was at that time, I'd got everything chucked at me. I was on good cash. Or, like I said, I was living a dream in Bradford, kid from Bradford, and I was just doing what I wanted, really. You're bouncing around town. Yeah, like. pretty much, yeah. <laughs> all best gear. <laughs> I, think I rang I like, a couple of my mates at the time, Liam Harrison. Um, he, I rang him, he was going to college. I was like, mate, you're not going to college. You're like, what do you mean? I was like, mate, I've just signed a massive contract. I was like, we're going out. <laughs> and he was like, no, I'm going to college. I was like, mate, you're not, I'll pay for your night out, I promise. <laughs> we did that like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. <laughs> so we just like, just having a good time is what you do as kids. We're only 17, I don't know, we got out to a fair. Um, yeah, building up to it, I, I had a couple of injuries and whatnot. And I remember the tournament were coming up, so I wanted to get fit, obviously, to go to the tournament then. Um, I think I ended up going on a lads all day, so not, not <laughs> before that. So we ended up, ended up going away, coming back, and, and he ended up getting picked for it, obviously captain it. And what that came over him, we, we were pretty good side to affirm it. We had, a, if you look back now, obviously some of the players that we had, like George Williams, Ben Curry and stuff like that, we had a pretty, pretty stacked side, as, as what they'd say. Um, came over here, we stopped in Winner Manly, is it? In, like out in Sticks, we were yeah. in his, with, yeah. In up, Brisbane? No, is it Winner Manly? No, it's not Winner Manly, is it? No, down here. Oh. In Man, Man, where Manly train, sorry. Oh, Brookvale. Like out, out, out in sticks. Oh, yeah. Like the, this, the place where we stopped, it was awful. We were like, what's going on here? Spiders everywhere. Out lads here, <laughs> spiders. And we were just like, what is going on? So we played, a f played the first game against under-18s, New South Wales, and we ended up pumping them. And at the time, everyone was like, wow, this England team's going to be like one of the best teams we've ever had over here. Then obviously ended up playing the first test. I think we got beat 50 somewhere. 50 some at four, but we ended up having like a big brawl at the start of the game. Well, it started in the tunnel. I was the captain, and I think it might have been someone else, but I remember Adam, Adam Elliott being there. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I was just like fuming, obviously, ready to go, and I just turned around, I was swearing at him. <laughs> like, we were all, we're all just giving it to him, really, trying to, try to get him off a game, and went out, kick off. I think someone carried the ball, someone ran past someone, started swinging, and it just, it just all erupted from there. Then obviously went to the second game in Winner Manly, that's what it was, we played there. Um, before the game, they're like, listen lads, just try to take it easy, like don't be, don't be getting into any fights, like we're here to play rugby, blah, blah, blah. And as we've walked out, we warmed up, we warmed up on the same pit bare grass. The grass wasn't that big, like it was tiny. And obviously me being captain, I was just, I was, I was still filming from the first game. <laughs> um, on the way back in the warm ups, I just ran straight through the Australian warm up. <laughs> so all lads were like, what are we doing? I'm like, fucking follow me. <laughs> so I just ran straight through the Australian, Australian warm up. So that's caused a bit of tension. And as and as we've gone out, um, they were literally, they were, the tunnel was, no, like, it wasn't even body, body width apart. And both teams were stood in the tunnel. So they were kicked off in the tunnel go on the field and we, we'd been saying listen don't like obviously we'll stir them up a bit but we don't want to be getting into a scrap we want to go out and win game got out i think it was one second at game running back one of our back rows just turned around and just slotted one of their players and it yeah, all up to the game <laughs> yeah i think fans were coming on the field and everything and i think funnily enough i think the the video recording of the game has been deleted as well so <laughs> there's no i think i think yeah. there, there was like there's one copy of that yeah. Going around. Yeah. But it's 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 kept, full, it's yeah. kept under, you know, mm. lock and key and yeah. full time security guard. But I have seen the video. Yeah. They were fucking it was hell. mayhem. It was it was mayhem. It was mayhem. mayhem. Yeah, like crazy. It, right, yeah. It like, was, like you say, the way there were there's people jumping in from kicking, kicking the people crowd, like, like yeah, mental, like to so some of like some of the dads <laughs> running on grabbing the grabbing kids. Like it was crazy. It was yeah. crazy to think oh, then they went and beat us again, which were even more of a shitter, but yeah, I think, like, obviously the Australia team at the time were pretty stacked as well. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Like quite a lot of them have gone on to play NRL and stuff like that. So I think it was a good reality check for us English folks to see where we were at. Obviously understand, obviously myself were playing for Bradford, a couple of boys playing first team and understanding that what obviously the level is over here and obviously where we needed to move really. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I had a couple of academy tours over here and 
they taught me some lessons yeah. a few times. It was a great experience. Um, but it, strange, strangely enough, you'd made your debut before that and you, and you, you touched on it. So you're 17, you're, you've made your debut at your hometown club, mm. um, a, a, t a team that you'd want to play for all your life. But it's very strange circumstances and a lot of mixed emotions in, in the room yeah. because the club had gone into administration and they weren't paying the wages. No, so no. you as a 17 year old, they're playing in the Super League. So you sat around really experienced players. Like what what was the feeling like for, for, yeah. for you personally in, inside that room? It was weird to affirm it, obviously. Like I said, being a Bradford fan all my life, all, all I wanted to do was play for Bradford and and obviously got the chance to do it. Look up, look up in the stands, see all my family there, and played a couple of games. And as the season went on, there were, there were whispers of it, obviously, obviously of it happening and, and whatnot. And I didn't drive at the time, so I had to get dropped off at training to my granddad. My granddad did drop my mum off at work, then drive me to training, drop really? me off. Yeah, yeah, so I didn't drive at the time. So I was we only 16, 17. Man, like man, sorry, how? <laughs> Crazy. That, that's <laughs> like... <laughs> It, but it is. It's the. Yeah. It's it's what you you need yeah, to do. Yeah. You need everyone to help you out. Like hundred percent. Yeah, that, and that's why. Like uh, when we as a family, we were close knit family. Everyone helped each other out. My granddad, would take me and my brother everywhere. Obviously, do what obviously do what he needs to do for us at the time and stuff like that. He helped my mum and stuff. So, like I said, he'd, he'd take us to train. He'd, he'd drop me mum off at work and literally as as mum were getting out of the door, we put the, the radio on. And it just came on. Bradford Bulls have gone administration. None of the players knew anything about it. So we really? were, I was like, fuck, like, what's going on here? Like, my mum was just like, just calm down, it'll be all right, don't worry. I'm going to go to work, give me a text what happens, blah, blah. So he's then dropped me off at training. As we've gone to the training ground, there were loads of cameras and whatnot outside. We've gone straight into this, straight into this room, pulled us all straight in and just been like, yeah, the club's gone to administration. This is the fella that'll be taking over administration. And we're sorting out, obviously, what stuff needs to get solved. People coming in, taking like the weight, weight equipment and like weights and stuff like that, because obviously that, oh, that, part, like that the, part of the debt, yeah, you know what I mean? So what Bradford owned. So we were and like, anything that they anything, owned, anything it, was, they owned, it was going. going. Yeah, so we were like, fuck, like what are we going to do here? That week, I think, I think we were playing Wigan on that week. And it was so weird, because obviously we thought it was the last game. And, we, we all boys were like, right, we can't leave it. We're not training. We're, we're, not, we're not insured or anything. Or no that. insured. We, no we're sure. getting paid. So I, I think they don't think they paid us for that month. So me being a young kid, I, I lived in my means. Like at the end of the day, I was like spending your money with the So I had to put, get myself an overdraft just in case, obviously, all happened and, and stuff like that. So some of the boys obviously struggled. They had mortgages. I didn't have one at the time. Yeah. So I was only young and stuff, which was a good thing for myself. But yeah, went all that week. Then they rang us up, literally. I think we played Wigan on a Friday. They rang us up on a Wednesday and they're like, oh, we're going to be able to play this week. We'll get you insured. So we were like, oh, go on then. We'll, why not? You know what I mean? We'll, we'll play. Turned up on Thursday. Um, turned up on Thursday. Did like a little team run. We are like, oh, yeah, what we're doing. A couple of lads, I think, even went to the pub after it. I think just sat there and like, oh, like, this is the last game. We might as well enjoy it together. Ended up going to Wigan, beating them. <laughs> we, I don't know how. <laughs> we ended up beating them last minute. Then it turned out week after they were like, oh no, we're, we're back up and running. So oh, like, really? oh, what's going on here? And it just went like that for quite a few years to fair. Then I remember Omar Khan, obviously from Bradford, I think he owned like a curry, curry house or something in Bradford. I don't know how he got got <laughs> registered to buy Bradford to fair. Um, he came in and bought the club and signed me and Elliot, because me and Elliot were like the two Bradford boys and signed me and Elliot on like a, Massive contract to a fair, like, like massive. It'd be still be a massive contract nowadays, and we were just really? like, "How you good what, is this?" You what? Were you seventeen? Oh, seventeen. Yeah, I think I signed like over hundred. Like me and Elliot both at the same time, because Elliot's only what four years older than me, so he was only like twenty odd. And he so he's going. I'm going to invest in yeah, the youth. Yeah, signed us but both up. You'd sign sign your probably overs, right? Oh, massively. Yeah, just to keep us like, but we were like, we weren't going to argue about it. <laughs> like, I'd only played like about. Think about ten games or some maybe a bit more, and we were just like, "What is going on here?" We were obviously like, "Yeah, why not?" We had a bit of interest from other clubs. I think it was Marlon came into Salford as well, so he would try to poach people as well, try to get Elliot and sign signed a new deal for the club. I was like, "Right, this is obviously where I want to be for the next." I think it like four years and stuff like that. Then literally must have been about six weeks later, I got a phone call off my agent. Elliot got one. He's been sold to Catalan and been sold to Wigan. <laughs> and we were like, fucking hell, what's going on here? Like, obviously, if you, yeah, if you agree to it, like, because it was like classes prize assets to the club, we just signed a new deal. So we were like the 
obviously two people that were on the biggest contracts and blah, blah, blah. Obviously, we had to agree to it. Oh, so he's done that as like a bit of a thing for administration. Then he's got uh, more he's got Signed more you on there. big coin. Yeah. Obviously, at the time, we didn't think all, all you of it. Be, we was like, yeah, was, you know, how good is this? So were you being used as? Pretty much, probably. Like, well, he, would get, he got the money for, for us then, obviously. we were, I went to Wigan, so then he went to Catalan, did Elliot, and he got, he got a transfer fee for Elliot. He got a transfer fee for myself. Did you get any say in it? Well, obviously, we had to agree terms yeah. and whatnot, but with a year, Wigan would had just won a double in 13, so I was like, oh, why do these want to sign me? Like, I'm, like I, didn't get, I didn't get it for myself, to be fair. They had Harrison Hansen, Jack Hughes, Liam Farrell back row, and I was like, fuck, what am I? Like, is there any point in me going now? We're going to get an opportunity. Because I've been playing for Bradford, you know what I mean? Like, pretty. Week in, week in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, where do I go here? Do I, do I take the opportunity and whatnot? And so I went back and forth for Wigan, and there was a certain day I had to sign it. Because Chris Wadlinski then drove over to my house about half, about, must have been about half 12 at night. He like, ended up, came to my house, drove from Wigan, signed contract, and yeah, on my way. I, I went for a meeting with Wayne, sorry, before that, I had a chat with him. Um, he tells a story all the time. I couldn't, I couldn't really speak. I didn't know what to say. I was just, oh, like, really? yeah, I was just, <coughs> I just, yeah, I just shit myself early. <laughs> Still 17 at the time? 18, or 18 or yeah. yeah. So, you get, I think as well, like, it's, it's a really good sporting lesson what happened to the Bradford Bulls because mm. when I was growing up, like they they were the team to that beat. Thing, yeah. Like they two thousand and four, they beat Penrith in the World Cup yeah. Challenge. Like, how possibly can things mm. go wrong? And then, you know, they win a couple Crazy. of I think they win the Super League in in oh five again. And then that was the last and then yeah. they just fell off a cliff. Yeah, so like I said, obviously being a kid from Bradford, once I got into it. Like that, our Friday nights were literally finish school, go on, get changed straight away, and go straight up to Bradford. And we'd get there like two hours before a game, three hours before a game, and just run around the stadium. They had like a big show on every night, you know what I mean? Like before the game, like bully bully and all that, yeah. you know what I mean? So, well, they did, they were the big, yeah, like, yeah. And if you look at the Super League back in England, they were the ones to to really take mm. it into like that event thing. I, yeah, I can remember going there as a St. Helens fan. Mm. Thing, like this is different like the the dirt track around like yeah, they yeah. drive the cars and big monster trucks and yeah. stuff yeah so like they made it an event yeah it was a horrible stadium yeah. to play and yeah. like big crowds as well yeah, so massive, you'd wonder yeah. how a club like that does go mm. under yeah it's it's sad it's sad. It, it, well, obviously it was sad at the time um obviously more so as well because my family were just massive Bradford fans like my grandma like they are she's still got a season ticket now so like stuff like that for my family, they were just like, what we're we gonna do? Like, they, they were part of their weekend as well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that's, the, she only grew up like, my great granddad, his ashes is sprinkled on the on the turf as well at Bradford. So like, it, it we're running the family early, you know what I mean? So. Mm. Yeah, it, it's it's crazy. Like you say, you, you, yourself and Elliot Whitehead, who've been, you know, England's first choice back row for, mm. what, eight to 10 years now. Mm. At, at the much, same yeah. club, you think, geez, like, You'd want to keep them the yeah. good foundation. You've got the Burgess brothers as well, Luke Gale, plenty of other yeah. quality players, players that come out there, yeah. have come out of the Bradford system, but unfortunately just couldn't hold on. Couldn't to hold them, on yeah. to them. It, it, it's just a big sport and lesson for like even when you see a team like Penrith flying now, yeah. like that was Which similar to Bradford back yeah. in the early two thousands, and like yeah. now they're languishing. Sadly, and sadly. It is. It if is. You don't it, have an organisation behind you to control it and understand what obviously the future looks like instead of just the present like you you struggle don't you, you yeah know what I mean? so. like and you know i remember they tried to blame it on like yeston harris's yeah, deal yeah. or something like that Probably but really yeah. like it's an administ mm. administration administration issue that they they fucked up yeah they time. fucked up one of the biggest clubs in super league mm. um, in the world and, in the world, and, when, in the world. Yeah, and yeah. with the nursery that they have like you wonder how many players that so say if when when you were a kid, if you didn't have that that Bradford Bulls 100%. team, like would you have had the same interest yeah. in it? And how many kids just have gone on to do? Like I I remember because my brother used to play three years above, and I used to watch kids. And I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna have to play against this bloke. He's unbelievable. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and, and like you you get a few years on, and you're like, where's he gone? You know what I mean? Like, and probably because they didn't have that environment of us, obviously Bradford being there, taking people on and stuff. You know what I mean? Like they they just lose interest in themselves. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Obviously, I was one of the fortunate ones that obviously managed to get into the system and obviously get out of it as when obviously we're going going down. But I think I, I, I'm pretty close with a CEO at the moment. It's called Jason Hurst, and I think they're giving it a good good crack and they're getting it back together, which is a good 
Oh, it's good, it's good for the city, mate. Like you said, yeah. the, fan, the fans. It's a city. Yeah, yeah, like city, that's yeah. another thing you forget. Like Bradford's a the city, fucking yeah. city. Yeah, the need it's that, not one of these small towns. It's not, you know, with all due respect, it's not a Featherston. No, no, it's a, you know it's, where you, you yeah. smaller area. You Bradford's a city yeah. that needs a, plenty of people to tap into. People, yeah. obviously supporters and stuff. And like I said, I think they're giving it a good go now. Eamon O'Carroll, he's he's head coach. And Is what, he? Yeah, he's head coach. Yeah, so hopefully they can give it a good stab and try and get back in there. Try yeah. and get back in the Super League. Well, mate. During um, your Bradford playing days, you didn't play that many games. <laughs> <Play> um, <issue. laughs> and it's, you know, as well as being in the headlock, it's a bit of a <laughs> bit of a discussion point that yeah. we often bring up. First one on it, to be fair. First, one, first time we really got a yeah. good England camp on it. <laughs> um, what, what do you remember about missing all those tackles? <laughs> I, <laughs> all I remember is you got put in... You got put loose forward to mark me. <laughs> <laughs> then I all remember is going. I, obviously, I didn't score a try at the time because we got disallowed. There'd probably be footage of it. But I just remember bumping you off, and <laughs> <laughs> leaning over, and obviously I fell short by a double movement. So, <laughs> but it was just all that quick. So I was just like, obviously you, you can't remember. It, you no, know. I can't. I can't remember that. <laughs> I remember trying to like. Seeing you and Deke, Paul Deacon <laughs> next to each other. <laughs> Paul Deacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm about 20 years older than me. <laughs> oh dear. But yeah, yeah so good times. It was. It, yeah, for <coughs> for those listeners um, that are interested, me, me and Bateman, we did play against each other. In, yeah. you, you were in a struggling Bradford team it's, coming yeah. through. In fact, I, I had your name saved as James Speedbump. <laughs> Graham <laughs> for a long time and then I did as well. <laughs> do, do you remember? Right, so I, I think we, we'd been partying with England yeah. and like the next day and I've just gone, hey, Batty, check your uh, check your Wikipedia page. Yeah, <laughs> you're all just doing it. <laughs> Fucking st- <laughs> sat there in the toilet going on Wikipedia <laughs> to edit it. I do remember that. You used to do it all the time. I'd change it back then you do it again. <laughs> Yeah, I that, oh, man. they were good times, good times yeah, were um, good. but yeah, so you you move um, to like you say the the double winners. Um, how does a young John Bateman adapt to that? Is, is it seen as a real big step up, class above? How do you force your way into that team? Um, yeah, I suppose obviously Wigan in general, mate. It's a, it's a massive club, um, world world known. Obviously, everyone knows what it's about. It's a, it's a tough environment to go into. Um, being a young kid as well, I suppose going there. And having to put your best foot forward, and, but also wanting to spend a place. That's what I was about. I wanted to play. I didn't want to go there and just be a bench warmer or build up another year. And obviously, all oh, right, now I want to play now. Like that, that, that's what I was about. And I suppose having the young kids there, George Williams, Joe Burgesses, Ryan Sutton's at the time helped me because I also knew them. I played on the England Academy with them. So playing, playing, training, playing alongside them helped me massively. Um, but yeah, going there, mate, it was. Tough environment. Um, Sean Wayne didn't take any prisons. Put it put it one way. Um, you had to be you had to be on all the time. And like I said, it, it probably bought the, bought the best out of me. To be honest, that's that's obviously what I thrived off. And I enjoyed it to a fair. Don't get me wrong. Some days I go home and a bit in bits, but I enjoyed enjoyed that. Uh, when I got there as well, Dan Sargentson signed that year, so we lived together for I think it was about a good twelve months. So you live with Sarge. Yeah, Sarge. Yeah, live with Sarge. Scruffy Sarge. <laughs> used to have boils all over the place. <laughs> nah, it was good, it was good. And Sarge is a, he's a very smart bloke, you know what I mean? He knows what he's on about and stuff. And it was good to obviously be around him on that. And he was he were also one of them players that thrived in that environment to a fair, you know what I mean? He loved that contest, he loved that challenge. And I think it was good for us to a fair, man. Obviously, we both went on to... Um, he made his debut, I think, in the Huddersfield game, the first game of the year, and I didn't. And I was... I was fuming to a fair. Like I didn't play. I was 18th man. I remember sat there and I was just, I was just, I was fuming. But then I was also right, right. This is what I need to do and and whatnot. And we the year, the, the week after we flew out to play um, Sydney Roosters Arena World Cup Challenge, and we played a we played um, a friendly against New Zealand Warriors. I remember, I remember obviously getting the chance. He, he said, "Oh, you come on half time, whatnot." So I was like, right, this is my chance to try and show him what what I can do and whatnot. And um, they ended up getting picked on the bench to play against Sydney Roosters in World Cup Challenge, so they ended up making my debut then. So, yeah, it was. Was that your debut yeah, for Wigan World Cup Challenge? Yeah. How did you find that? It tough, tough. Yeah, it was just, it was, it was good as in, obviously, that making my debut. I had, obviously, my family weren't there. 
and obviously when you make your debut, you want your family yeah. and friends to be there and stuff. But that's in the Roosters team at the time were probably a stacked team. Not probably the was a stacked team. You know what I mean? They had some very good players, and obviously it was just I enjoyed the I enjoyed the contest obviously, but it was just a tough physical game, and that was probably my introduction of obviously where I needed to be and what level I needed to be at. Yeah, well, you're on your way to becoming uh, a superstar in in the Super League. You win two titles over there w with Wigan. Um, what are you? What are your memories from winning those premierships? Obviously, I I, I know from the outside looking in, you're a very tight group, and yeah. you speak about people like Sarge and, and Ryan Sutton and 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 Joe Burgess and people like that, Sam Tompkins, like, it, yeah. What what are your emotions from from or what are your thoughts on looking back at, about what you managed to achieve with that great club? Yeah, um, good, good, some good times, mate. Like I said, best probably the best times in my life to a fair. Obviously, with a group that we had, we had a very young team at the time, but we had some good senior blokes around us. You, Mickey Max, Sean Lachlan, Tommy Lulai, like some of the best blokes like you could ask for. You know what I mean? Not, not about playing playing side by side with them because they, they were the best players, but just blokes, good fellas, learning off them and <coughs> Sean, one of Sean Wayne's motto as well you've got to be a good bloke as well obviously a good player and that was first and foremost and i think the squad that we had the team that we had what 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 a bunch of people that were good blokes you know what i mean and got on with each other so that's that's what helped um we got there 2020, 2014 we ended up losing that one we got there 2015 lost that one i remember me and george me and george obviously were coming through at the same time similar age and we were like we can't lose like is this going to be us like Get to every final and lose every final, and we were like, we can't do it, we can't lose three. Like, and we're just like little conversations, like, and obviously, we we started to probably have a bit more of a like toll on the team. Obviously, the players that were, were coming and stuff like that. So, yeah, I remember that game, obviously, 2016, played against Warrington. And I say it, sorry, I say I remember it, I don't remember much of it, I just remember winning to a fair and the celebrations, obviously, after and, and whatnot. I suppose you get that, <clears throat> you get that feeling of obviously wanting to do it again. and once we again, we played 2017, played Cronulla in the World Club Challenge, won that. And just went on from there, really, to a fair mate. Um, yeah, it's just, like I said, like, you probably, the game itself, it's, the game's hard, like, it's a tough game. You, you don't, you don't look forward to the game, you look forward to what's after the game. Yeah. You're winning and the feeling after it, that's it. They're the feelings that you probably chase more, you know what I mean? But then, obviously, the grind in the game and playing the game is, is what you train for week in, week out. And I suppose the feelings after big, a long season, going out there and winning winning the trophy that obviously you've worked hard for is, is the best feeling ever. And to, to do that twice with, with such a great club and the people in that club. And I suppose, probably, obviously, people say what were the best one. I, 2016 were good because it was the first one, first one I ever won, and seeing the family and friends there, and you know what I mean. It's it's a feeling that you say like that's what they've done for you, and it's a little yeah. bit of want, wanting to give back a little bit, you know. Yeah, what a mean? bit of, bit of like yeah. appreciation, yeah, you know and what I mean? payback. Like, yeah, they've done all that for you, and just seeing the people there, and just seeing like after the thing, like having brother hold the trophy and stuff like that, it's like it means it means a, it means a lot to you. But I think the 2018 one, the story behind obviously Wayne leaving, myself leaving, Sam leaving. I think Ryan Sutton were leaving and just to go out there and get that, I think we went on like a I think it was I think it was about fifteen game winning streak and like the team were changing week in, week out. We were, players were coming in that I'd, I'd hardly played, young lads coming in and we were just like, we're, just, we're not gonna lose. Like there was just a feeling in the environment we're like, no one can beat us here. Went on and just ended up winning it and to have that feeling to leave to leave on that note were like a massive thing for me, obviously. Obviously spent some great years there, probably improved as a player I think that was a, a big a big moment for me taking that step to go to Wigan and then coming out the other side and getting trophies and it makes it worthwhile of going like I made the right decision in a way you know what I mean like, I, I did what I, I wanted to do and, and I've come out of the other end winning something yeah did you message um Khan from Bradford say, thanks for selling me <laughs> like. I dropped off his career house a few times and it's gone so obviously he's done someone else dodgy as well I'm going to nip him for a career one of the best mates called Joby Murphy he always sends me pictures of me <laughs> like, fuck off mate <laughs> hey, um, obviously what, you, what you're creating there at Wigan very very strong bonds yeah. and I, I always got the sense of that um, be, being in England camp, you knew the Wigan lads were, were particularly close w yeah. with one another, and the way you spoke, uh, and obviously the success that you had. But um, the NRL come knocking, but you're under contract. Yeah. So, what, where, where's where's your head at? What what what's going through your brain there? Because again, 
for me, a similar experience at St. Helens where I'm really close with a number of the players. Yeah. And yeah, I've got this ambition to come to Australia. Was it was it the same for you? Was it the ambition, or was it just a, a new opportunity to to pro progress your talents even further? Um, yeah, the ambition was there. I'd had a couple of opportunities previously previously to to that, and I was just never ready. I just like obviously I, I knew. I I think you know in yourself, you know when you are ready, and you know when you aren't ready. And like I, I just got to that point. I always said to myself, I want to be one of the best players in in the Super League and I just felt like the 16 season, 17 season, 18 season, I was just getting better and better. I just felt like I was ready to take the step as in, I, 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 no disrespect to the Super League, but obviously the calibre of week in, week out game. Love, I love competing, I love the competition, I love I love the fact of having to get up week in, week out. That In my in my head, that's like, that's why I do do it. I love I love the consistency of being being on and being ready to go. And I felt like if I wanted to if I wanted to take the next step, it was to come over here. And that 2018 season obviously came in and just had a little bit of back and forth. And I always remember I went on a training camp with Wigan. Went to we always went to where was it Florida. We always went to Florida. And Lee Lennon came out and I think it was 2015. It might have been. And he said, "Oh, fun, it was so weird hearing like a." The chairman say it, and he was like, "Oh, we are. We like. We look at ourselves as like the stepping stone for players to then to go to NRL." I was just like, "Really? Yeah." I was just like, "It's weird. It's a weird thing that." But we were like, "Oh." So in my head, I always had like, "Oh, like in my head, like oh, I wanted to our next step." You know what I mean? So when he said that, I was so like, the, "Oh, right." The, Ian Lennon. Yeah, he said that. Yeah, and uh, like, "Oh, like oh." Then he said, "We'll always welcome you back, obviously, if it doesn't work and whatnot." But we were like, "All oh, right," because quite a lot of players have done that. Sam, I think, yeah. he's just done that. Joe Burgess has just done it. Sarge had done it. Yeah. So I like, all right, fair enough, blah, blah, blah. And then I just remember that, obviously, like I said, I was under contract and my agent obviously approached Wigan and whatnot. Then I think, obviously, Leno looked at it like he, he was going to get money for us, which he did. So it was, good, it was a good thing for himself. We've we? got John yeah. Bateman. <laughs> yeah, famous. <laughs> famous um, Very Barrett. good man, yeah. um, chairman of yeah. um, Tried some Wigan Rugby League, Ian Lennigan. Yeah, a lot of success at the club, but it worked the club very well, obviously. Like I said, a lot of success means that you're, you're doing something right. And obviously got to a point and... Canberra came in and a couple of clubs came knocking, but obviously, my me, me, me good pal Elliot White had been there. And I remember Ricky, he, he got on the phone, I think they were having a drink, and he rang me, did Ricky, and I don't think he could understand the word. He said, put phone down, Elliot, like, he couldn't understand you, mate. <laughs> so I'm like, fucking hell, that was good, innit? And just went from there, really. My agent, my agent yeah, sorted it all out and whatnot, and yeah, signed, sealed, and we're ready to go. And, mm. I think obviously you'll know yourself and until it's actually out there. When I signed, I signed it a couple of months before and until it's actually out there, you don't feel like it's real. Yeah. And then like, I was like, oh yeah. And blah, blah. Then it came out and I was like, fuck, I'm actually going here. Like I'm actually up in sticks. I'm leaving my family, leaving everyone behind. I'm going to actually take that next next step in my, in my life. It's not like it's round corners. It's the other side of the world, but also like it's the next step in obviously my rugby career as well as obviously where I want to go. Did, did that factor in? In terms of leaving you, leaving your family as well. Yeah, massive mate. Obviously, I've, obviously, I had a little girl. She was well, she, how many years ago now? She'll have been about eight year old. So don't get me wrong. She she came to age where she understood, but she didn't really understood. You know, you know what I mean? Like yeah, like you know, for an eight year old, it's hard Australia's to, far away, yeah, but yeah. you don't really know how. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, like she she didn't really, she didn't know how to factor it all in, and obviously it's trash. I, I had a few conversations sitting her down and explaining to her. And, but she probably didn't, she didn't get it. I know she didn't get it because the last time when I told, like, obviously coming back here, she got it a lot more. Mm. You know, I mean, she was a lot older. And it was just hard, mate. Like I said it previously, like, we're such a close family. And, and I suppose, like, you look, people don't understand this. My family's weekends were built and come and watch me play rugby. Like, yeah. they, they go but Wigan and, you know what I mean? Like, that, that bit, they, they get finished work early and stuff like that. You know They'd be in the players' lounge yeah, after yeah, the game, yeah, you know I mean? hanging around with 100%. other people. It's a yeah, big it's part of their part, social life. Yeah, like it is. A, like, and for me to take that away from I felt like a, you know what I mean? I felt I felt harsh in that way, but obviously for me to take my next step, but then I also I had to look after, I have to think about what I wanted and, and where I wanted to go and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, it was hard, hard back and forth. I've like, I made the right decision, have I, am I going to do this, you know what I mean, and stuff like that. But I think having Elliot and Oji and Ryan Sutton signed at the time, I think having them boys there helped me massive. Well, they did help me massive. Yeah. Like, like, it helped me the decision even more so. Like, I made a decision knowing for well I was going into a place where I knew people and I knew, I knew Elliot as in, it, I didn't know him just through rugby. I knew, was, knew him outside, you know what I mean? Like, he yeah. was from like 10 minutes is where, where I was from. We could talk about the same people and like stuff like that helped massively. And when I landed there, I lived, 
lived in his house and then literally then bought, then, sorry, rented an house out just behind him. So, like, yeah, I thought he was sick of me by the time I got there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, you, you land in Canberra. What, what are your thoughts on the pre season? Because obviously, Canberra's climate is um, a little bit up and down. It's known for their cold winters, mm. not that cold from comparison to us, but um, the summers are pretty hot as well. Like, I know when I first landed, getting into it, because usually our pre season is short if you're playing for England yeah, and yeah. it's cold yeah. but there, yeah. but here it's, it's long. long it's a slog <laughs> and, and it's hot very warm yeah um, yeah I remember flying in there and I gen- honestly I looked out the window I thought when am I going to here desert because there was nothing there <laughs> and I was just like what the fuck is going on here I landed at like about half 11 and the man and the fella at the time that picked me up I went back at car and Canva Canva's quiet at best of times and I've landed there like just like, like January 2nd, I think it was. So there was literally no one there. Obviously, pitch black. So I'm driving through. And I said to a fellow, like, oh, who know you? Like, oh, if you're bored tomorrow, I'm like, if I'm bored tomorrow, I don't know anyone. Like, obviously, I'm going to be bored. He said, we'll take you to War Museum. And I was just like, what have I done here? <laughs> I was just like, I go, take you to the War Museum? Museum. And I was just like, mate, what is going on? So I got in the hotel, sat in the hotel. I think, I, well, I did even. Where, I where was it? Where was Elliot and Oji? Because no, no one no one would you into like the 10th of Jan. So oh. I, I landed early because obviously they do like we want you in, blah, blah, blah. And I think I remember getting in the hotel and I took my PlayStation with me and I couldn't even put my PlayStation on a TV. <laughs> so you can imagine what I'm like at the moment. So I rang my mum, I'm like, Mum, what have I done here? Like, I've made the wrong decision. Like, I don't know why <laughs> like, I'm stuck here. <laughs> I couldn't talk to anyone. I think I, I could only talk to people because my phone, I had to get Wi Fi on my phone. My phone wasn't even changed over. And I was like, what is going on? Like, then obviously, fast track from there Elliot ended up coming so he was like oh come on come to mine for a bit and did you go to the war there. museum nah <laughs> no, I just sat in the hotel <laughs> try to get my playstation on <laughs> I could just imagine yeah. how many goes oh, did you give it You're like, a lot of <laughs> yeah I nearly pulled TV off at war at one point but um, yeah just went from there and, yeah like you said the pre-season mate um, a lot different we had Nigel Astrid Jones at the time and very he into his running I can, which, 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 I, I suppose. <laughs> what a fucking horrible way to yeah, describe yeah, a preseason. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's into, into his running. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he loved us being run. Like, and for me personally, I, I, want, I didn't, obviously, I thought I didn't mind it, but it was hard. Like, I, I enjoy the running side of it. I don't, I don't really like the gym to a fair, but he's, um, he, he just ran us and ran us and ran us and ran us. <laughs> and he just continues that. But I think for, for the year that we had, I think it was. I think it was what we needed at the time, and obviously the players that we had there, I think they they benefited massive off it. Off yeah. It. Well, obviously you, you, we'll, we'll get into that going into to playing the grand final and, and the season that you had. But um, I hear a tale. Um, <laughs> Who do you for? So <laughs> what, what I've been told is uh, Ricky Stewart's picking his team for round one. Uh, he puts you on the bench. You turn around and say, "What fucking good am I coming off the bench, mate?" <laughs> Get me in. Is that a, it, That's a, no? I saw it, it was. I brought my rib. I brought my rib in preseason. Three minutes in. No, no, sorry. Three weeks into preseason, and I think we had like seven week left of preseason. Yeah. And uh, my rib were like going to be six weeks. I didn't do any contact, so I was just running. That's why. Oh. Uh, so yeah, I just class. I was like, when they what were a do, horrible, horrible know, fucking preseason. When they were doing contact, that I was just running up and down sideline and, and whatnot, and just doing all that shit. Really, I'd done a, I'd done a couple of stuff like in, in and out of team, but no contact. Then you're like, right, I'm, obviously you've not played. We'll put you on bench, and I like, I don't, I, I don't play on bench, man. I don't come off a bench for it. Like I want to start. I can. He's like, what do you mean? I like. I want to start, like I've done enough running, I'm, I'm fit enough. And he's like, yeah, but you've not had the contacts. I said, mate, don't, don't worry about it, I'll be fine. And one thing is what like, I hate strapping. I fucking hate it. Like it's, I hate being, yeah. Like, yeah you don't want So I had a big, I had a big pad on me thing. Like So I, so we played Gold Coast up there. And um, ten, about 10 minutes into the game, I pulled pad off, slung it up, physio, I said, take that shit off, like get rid of that. Did you and, have a needle or? Yeah, no, no, just had a pad on, chucked that and just ended up playing game and, that was a game when I pretended to chuck the ball at, I think it was Jared Wallace, I think it was, when I, I was like, and he, he goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, just went from there, really. And I played loose forward, then Taps got injured against Melbourne, so I moved into the back row, I think it was like two, three games into into the season. Yeah. So, so you started round yeah, one, you managed to yeah. convince so, Ricky Stewart. Yeah, yeah, convince him to let me start. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah, because like I said, he, he just didn't think I had the legs in me to play. I'm like, no, I'll be ready to go, I've trained enough. Mm. So yeah, just end up end up starting the game. Yeah. 
What What do you think? The, the main reason was for you making such a, an instant impact, John, because you know, you could be forgiven to like ease your way in first year, um, find your way, and then really excel in your second year. But like, was it your mentality, your tra- like the new training regime, coaching environment, <coughs> style? Wanting to, did you did you feel you came with like a bit of target on your back? Like, or was it your personal style that? Um, well, wanting to prove people wrong, perhaps you had your yeah. doubters. I think it'll be a, a, quite a lot of them, obviously, all mixed together. I think, obviously, um, I think one thing that I one thing that I always said to myself, like, give me a full because you're obviously in England, you don't really get full pre seasons. No. And that one thing I always said, and I said it publicly as well, give me pre season, I'll be ready to go. And they're, they're like, yeah, what do you mean ready to go? Like, I'll, I'll compete, I'll be, I'll be there, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be a good enough player to play week in week out, blah blah. Because when I came. Like you say, the target, I didn't really have a target on me back. No one, knew, no one didn't really know. They don't really take much interest, obviously. They hear of you now and then, obviously, but I was only so young. I'd not really be played. I played centre for England, you know what I mean? So I, yeah. I, people knew of me, but yeah. not obviously, like obviously what I could do and stuff. So a little bit of that, but I suppose as well, Ricky, mate, when I got there, Ricky, Ricky took me in and he, he, he more or less just said, do what you want, really, mate. Like my games are. I like play, I like floating about. I like playing all the game, uh, playing what I see really. And he just more or less gave me a free role. I had, I had um, Aiden C's obviously my teammate now, and BJ Lou and Jordan Mapana, and that edge was just like a free for all. Like we'll just yeah. like give us ball and we'll just create some type thing. You know what I mean? So I think the confidence in yourself and um, a big thing as well, mate. I, I, going back to my family, I, I didn't want to come over here and piss it about. Piss about. I, I wanted to yeah. come over here, and I, I knew what I'd sacrifice leaving my family behind. I knew I wasn't going to see my little girl, and I was like, I'm not coming over here. I'm fucking wasting the fact of not seeing them and, and being shit. Like, because to me that was that's the biggest fail that like, you could have done, like letting my family down. And yeah, that that was a big thing for me. I, like, I wanted to come over here and prove a point and watch. I've been watching me at home, being proud of me to a fair. So that was quite a big thing. Mate, it's a, it's an amazing thing that that drive. Mm. Like not wanting to let people down, like you say, you've come all this way, you've sacrificed mm. so much. So, well, yeah, I'm gonna go all in. Yeah, I used to. Uh, one thing I might sound obviously to people like what, weird, but like I always, I always pictured like I remember saying bye to my family in the airport, and like I just like I picture that in my adult time because I'm like that's that one of the worst feelings that I ever had. Just saying bye and not know. Obviously, like you, you obviously you, you gonna, I might see him in three months. I'm gonna see him in three months, but in my head, you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know, yeah. what, you know what I mean. And in my head, I was like, I don't want that. Like that, that's the worst feeling. You know what I mean? And it drove me, and drove me. And like, and times when I obviously want to go home and stuff like that, I was like, nah, come on, mate, we need to get through this. Like, you need to do it and whatnot. So, mm. yeah, pretty. It's huge, yeah. that mate. It, it really is. I, I think as well what you you spoke about, like your unorthodox style how it worked over here because people were so used to dealing with structure yeah. and dealing with edge back rowers that would just get on the three man, hit the yeah. line, just like punch a hole, yeah, punch a hole like mm. good defensive team. Like obviously there's some great hole runners, yeah. but good defensive teams sort of like pick it up. Though, yeah. pick it up. Yeah. But I think I, I thought your style worked well. We'd come back against the green, grain, yeah. use footwork. Um, and like you say, with, with that edge, with the talent that you had yeah. on that side, yeah. It did seem to, it seemed to fit, yeah. and, and I think sometimes you need an outlier like yourself yeah. to to come in and and really promote that style. Yeah. I guess the probably question I'd want to ask is, did, did you realise were you aware of the impact that you were having on on the Raiders, but also on the competition as well? Probably not. No, not at the time because no, I was just a kid from Bradford that just wanted to play rugby. Yeah, and that is literally all. Like, and I still say it now. Like, probably sometimes, like. I'm just still that kid that I'm just enjoying myself. Like, like I'm literally having a good time, and literally enjoying myself. And that's I started playing the game because I enjoyed it. I didn't start to play in the game because I wanted to get paid or wanted to make a big difference. I kept, I started playing it because I, I love playing it. Like and give me a ball, like I'm just bounce around. Like keep training and stuff. Like once I'm, when I'm there, I'll mess about. And, but I just enjoy playing. I enjoy I play what I see in, in a way. You know what I mean and stuff like. And I think going back to what you've just said. Obviously, the preseason was the toughest I've ever been. Is I've ever had, and like I was the fittest I've ever been. So, like in my head, I I always prided myself on like last twenty minutes when people are getting tired. That's when I like that's when you need to be at your best. You know what I mean? That's when you, I need to be fit enough, fitter than everyone else because everyone else is going down. And I want to be going up in a way. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. Yeah. So, so like, you, that's your that's com- my, yeah. like you're not the biggest backer, yeah, yeah. but you're getting advantage 100%. when everyone you drag everyone to deep yeah, yeah. water. 
And it's not even necessarily by just running over someone. It's about having like, c can you match this footwork? Yeah. Can you can you tie in mm. when I'm going to hit that line? Yeah, and when I'm going to, you think I'm going to go to your right shoulder, I'm going to go to your left. Yeah, just testing you, them, yeah, yeah. keeping them on the toes. And Wayne Bennett once once pulled me in and he was like, John, you're probably one of the best players I've seen in like last 20 minutes of the game. I'm like, what do you mean? He was like, Obviously, the, everyone's fit and ready to go the first few, and I was just like, and it always stuck with me. He said it to me in 2015 or 16, I was like, fuck, make, make that your game. Like, if that's if that's what one of the best coaches in the world thinks, why not make it your game as in being fit, you know what I mean? Having that having that floating about and, and being able to do that, and why, why not make it my game? And, like, obviously, I still still do this here. That, that's what I want to do, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, well, it's, yeah. To, yeah. it's an amazing attribute to have. Yeah. Like, it, it really is, and it's a probably a different focus point than what most people enter into a game like start well yeah, yeah. start well yeah. like obviously you would want to start well yeah. but if you're thinking i want to be the best at the end mm. it's it's a massive yeah. advantage because if you look at if, if games are close that's where those type yeah. of players yeah, win ga win so. games but also yeah. the, the opposite side yeah. of players lose yeah. games yeah. for teams 100%. as well that's what like like i said everyone my focus of goes into the game start well but i know everyone else's focus is start well Right. Yeah. So like if they're starting well, obviously we're all we're all gonna be like this and yeah. You know, so if at the end of the game they're they're dipping I'm going, right, this is where you we go again and you know, it's like, like you said, taking taking people into deep water and seeing how far they can yeah. seeing how far you can drown them really. Yeah, <laughs> well, that, 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 well, it no, it, it's a like, metaphor, yeah, but it's yeah. it's what it's like. Literally, I like yeah. something I used to think about, like take yeah. people like I'm not gonna run through anyone. Mm. Like I'm not that type of front yeah. or I, if you wanna run at me, I'll I'll let's go. Yeah. But the way where you get your your benefit yeah. is the back end in that deep yeah. water. Who's going to tread for the yeah. longest? Who's going to keep their head above? Yeah. Who's going to drown and say see you yeah. later? But um, <clears throat> with you coming over here, like I say, the, the impact that you had was incredible. And <coughs> I think when a when a place like Canberra is is buzzing, oh, it, yeah. it it goes to another yeah. level oh, because. Yeah. It's not like the Sydney clubs where it's spread out. It's that one team town, yeah. And and the joint must have been rocking. Oh man, yeah, well, class. I think as well. Credit to the lads over there. I think you look throughout the team now. Quite even the younger blokes. Like we had Hudson Young won't play in. Corey Hosby won't play in. Emma Gould, like they were the blokes pushing us and. Like you, Bailey Simonsons, they were the blokes coming in week in week out. Like maybe train play, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like credit to them boys. Like obviously, like then we had the senior blokes who were in there. Like. You look at the team and what we had that back then. They're all massive names now. You know what I mean? Because yeah, because obviously the push we had, and we just had a bunch of blokes that wanted to win as well. You know what I mean? We had, we had a bunch of blokes that were probably not all screwed in, right? Like, just wanted to go out there. And, you know what I mean? And win a the bit game. Mis few misfits. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Like, and we were like, we just wanted to win. And you score two tries, we'll score three. It's all good. Like, we'll we'll we'll, we'll stop you from scoring a try. So like, you know what I mean? Like, it was literally just like that. And as simple as pe people might think, that's how simple it was. Like. And um, yeah, obviously, like I said, the, the the more we got into the season and we stayed stayed around the top four, obviously went to fir first position every now and then, dropped in and out, and the town just got behind us. It was it was crazy to be fair. And quite a lot of the boys out from Canberra as well. So having that click together, I think brought us closer together in itself. Because whatever you're doing outside of rugby, you need to do it together because you don't mm. have your families together. So I think it just built and built and built, and yeah, we went from there really. And, Obviously, we played, we got got in, got in top four, so we ended up having two shots, which were a massive thing for us. Obviously, being able to have two shots at, at the Cherries is a big thing. And played in Melbourne, ended up, we ended up scoring, didn't we? In well, last, yeah. you scored the try. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're the best player in yeah. the last yeah. 10 we've minutes, 20 on, minutes. VJ yeah. VJ probably took out credit for it with the pass. <laughs> <laughs> so, good pass to a fair, though. But, yeah, we ended up scoring that. We ended up scoring, scoring that and winning the game. Um, got a bit of luck as well because I think the touchy put flag up for uh, the winger being in touch at Melbourne. I don't think he was. The went on a short kick off. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Got a bit of luck. It was so, pandemonium at yeah, the end, yeah. wasn't it? So stuff like that. When stuff like that happens, you're like, oh, maybe, maybe we've got a chance here. Had the week off, played Souths, um, ended up beating them at home, and I, I've never probably seen it. Well, obviously, apart from probably the Tonga game. We played with England, the crowd that we had at GIO in the semi final, mate, was just absolutely bouncing. Like, there was no way we could have lost that game. Like, yeah. like there was no way. And Josh Papali, just, Josh Papali was just banging people for fun of it, scoring tries. And, you know, when he's on, it's a, he's a tough person to stop. And that's what I mean. I think everyone that year just had the years, obviously. You know what I mean? Then obviously we went to the grand final, mate. And, yeah. 
Yeah. Long, so. Just just before we get into that, one one of the the big things about tapping tapping into like a city or a town's identity, um, like the Viking clap. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was us. That's what that's what we were. You know, like what it mean? pissed me off. Yeah, I, I could but, imagine. But for but, it, for us, well, not yeah. only that, it's because Iceland beat England. Yeah, did, did, did. yeah and for Iceland beat yeah, England. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, like, I remember coming into training. Your was that on it? Your, yeah, yeah, in I the Euros, yeah. it was yeah. awful. I yeah. remember coming into training, and um, our uh, gear steward Fred Seraldo, a big Italy fan, <laughs> like <he's> Italian, <laughs> and. I'm like talking up England's yeah. chances, like it's coming home, and this fucking he's just like that in my face, and he's getting everyone to be yeah. like, mm. I'm like, like what's it takes off as well? It's like, yeah, it's <clears throat> so that pissed me off. But yeah. then I, that that was the main reason yeah. for it being. But yeah. I guess when you're a part of it, yeah, it must have been like oh, it's, it's huge or something so simple can just take off. Oh, it's mad. I would obviously, like I said, as the season went on. We were playing away games and our fans, obviously, there were that many fans there. They were just, and we were like, fuck, how good is this? You know what I mean? And every time we came out, even the, the song, the canvas song as well, it's pretty catchy, like the way it goes, the green machine, like that. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and when we come out, we'd, it'd be rock, the place would be rocking, obviously. It, it helps it helps anyway when you're winning. Yeah. And um, getting a few wins under his belt, it's, it certainly took off. And yeah, it was a good environment, it was a good place to be at the time, you know what I mean? It was really good. Yeah. Well, yeah. In, in your first season, um, you win Dally M, back row of the year, like that, yeah. that, uh, and and rightly so. Like you, you were just on fire. You bought a like a, a new mindset, but also a new style, which I always said like it was almost like that middleweight boxer, yeah. and and so unpredictable that teams and opposition defenses didn't know what to do with you, and a huge reason to why Canberra went to that grand final. Um, what? Well, what are your memories from that day? Obviously, what I guess naturally people would look at that grand final and stick out the the six again or or the the no six again. But mm. wh wh where do you, where do you think that? Where, where what do you think of when you when I asked you about that day? Yeah, a bit of a weird one. Obviously, I didn't realise until the time you play on a play on a Sunday. I can whenever I play grand finals in England, that like you always play on a Saturday afternoon. You know what I mean, like and. I'm like, what's going on here? Obviously, bank all the weekend up here, and I'm like, oh, like a bit different. A long, you had long bit of a longer. So, time. so like in terms of your mentality, you play that semi final against South, yeah. and you're not even focused on that. Nah, You've got no idea yeah. of next week's on a Sunday. Literally, no. Like, like you're it, just going, oh, here we go, whatever. Yeah. Here, here we, we go. go we'll yeah. win, and yeah. then oh. my focus was we won that. We won the the South game, and I then soon as soon it's because my brother was waiting on to fly over my grandma. So like, as soon as we won, oh, you're waiting yeah, on to win. See if we won, obviously they were gonna come over if we lost or won. I'm, I'm my best mate. So as soon as we won, I was like, right, I need to get the family over here because obviously then my brother were coming to the Delhi M with me. Yeah. So I, I wanted him to be there. He'd been a big part of me, like my life and stuff like that. So I was like, I want you to be there. Like I want you to come over. So he's like, well, obviously so I had to fly. So he flew in a couple of days earlier and whatnot. So I was just focused on that then. As the week went on, I was like, when, like, when do we go up here? Obviously, it must be soon. We're playing on Saturday. Like, and like, no, you know what? We play, fucking, we play Sunday. And I'm like, eh, well, we play, play grand final on Sunday. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You genuinely like, didn't, didn't know. know. And I'm like, well, I didn't know that. And they're like, all right, sweet. <laughs> like, so obviously, give me a bit, give a bit more time for my family to come over, <laughs> spend a bit of time with them and that as well. So I was just like, all right, sweet. <laughs> like, so I, yeah, I didn't really, didn't really know about it then. Obviously, the build up to it is, Obviously, you have your media, big media yeah. days and stuff like that. Do you that. find a big difference between... Yeah, the build-up's yeah. massive. Obviously, over in England, you just go visit the stadium and have a little look around Old Trafford, go look at Man United shirts, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. And, um, yeah, obviously, build-up and whatnot, then came and came up to Sydney. Obviously, coming up to Sydney, not being from Sydney, you have, like, the breakfast or whatever, you play your players. I, mm. I, I were ill that weekend, so I didn't do... Like, I didn't. I were ill a couple of days before, so I didn't do... The player thing where you walk out together. Oh right, yeah. So I didn't end up doing that, so I missed that. Then <clears throat> I found the, the, the I, obviously I didn't realise again that you didn't you don't warm up on the field like to me that was in England that's a big thing about going out taking it all in. Yeah, you know what I mean like I, getting the warm up. Then then when you go out, it's like you're into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I found that weird. But then obviously go, going out to the Viking Club again, mate. It was your class, like obviously because a big long tunnel. It's all cordoned off and it, you, you can't see anyone else mm. until you get out at end. Like that feeling of running out and be like, right, we're on here. Like, what's what's not? And it, even obviously, you mentioned the six again. Like in the game, you don't really 
probably more after the game, look on social media yeah. and, oh shit, yeah, like it is a big call on the one where he, they kicked the ball and the, the trainer got in the way. Yeah. Like and at the time, you just like, you, you crack can't, on. Yeah, you can't really be focusing on that or kicking off about it or going at ref because it's the next play, you know what I mean? It's it's what it is, what it is, the type thing, and you, you look at it after it. But for me, it was, we had these opportunities. We had some, some opportunities that we should have took, no doubt about it. But I, I still say I, I generally think like the best team won on a day. They took their opportunities. We didn't like as much as it killed me. Yeah, I remember stood there watching them lift it and stuff like that, and it, it absolutely killed me. But then I was like, you, you, you can't in games like this, you can't afford to lose to miss your opportunities, and we did. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, miss the moment yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. We're probably a bit caught up in it's the first time in thirty odd years, and Canberra have never not been here in a while, and you know what I mean. And, how good we, or the fairy tale at least for Canberra to win it and Sidney Mills was like, ah, fuck that. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, which obviously is part and parcel of what they do. But yeah, obviously it's hard, it's hard to take at the time, but you look back on it and, and you think what well, like when you obviously stripped the year back, it's it was it was a fantastic year, obviously, for myself and for the team as well. Obviously, it'd been even better if we could have won it. Yeah, it was, well, like I say, huge impact that you have. Um you go on to play a, a, another season at at Canberra and you 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 fall a game short of the final. Yep. Um, but prior to that, you you decided to to move back, back, yeah. back to England, but more specifically back to Wigan. Um, well, like I, I remember thinking like, oh, we've, I, I can remember personally, like I, I, as a mate and still as an act, uh, no, not as an active player, but fin finishing up, I remember thinking, well, but he's still got his best years yeah. ahead of him. Like, mm. no disrespect. Like, what? Why is he choosing oh, yeah. to go back? But I get like, yeah. What? What was behind that? Yeah, obviously, coming out of two thousand ninety, you good year, blah blah blah. And I, I had a shoulder re I, not a shoulder recon, but I had a shoulder injury uh, leading up to, leading up to pre season and whatnot, and back and forth. And I was just like, we didn't really know what we were with it, and I ended up going in getting the shoulder. Getting getting it fi fixed. Well, I thought it was fixed at the time. Turned out that the the surgeon had fixed the wrong thing, and we had loads of shit. So, yeah, what? And that. So the surgeon had done something different. It fixed the wrong yeah, thing. Yeah, it shaved bone off like a certain part of my shoulder which didn't need doing, and it missed some bicep, missed bicep and stuff. So I was like, "What the fuck's going on here?" Like, obviously, I tried to get back. Obviously, naturally, naturally, you think, "Oh, I'm, I'm ready to go." Then COVID came. Covid blew everything to pieces. No one knew what to do, and you could only train if you're injured. So I was doing stuff, and in my head, I'm like, like my shoulders fucked here. Like I don't know what's up with it. And I mean, I don't. I can't even go home if I wanted to go home because all airways closed. In terms of like going back to yeah, see your yeah, family, you know yeah. I mean? So the uncertainty. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. I was just a bit all over the place. End up going back in for another up, finding that my pec was torn and my, my, my bicep were torn. And I missed, and it, that, missed it, yeah, so a total different. So, my head was a bit all over the place, if I'm honest with you, um, at the time. And obviously, the, the COVID thing was a big thing. My granddad was poorly at the time, obviously, passed away. Um, it, Christmas just gone. Um, and he, he was really a lot of time. And obviously, COVID, you're shitting yourself, you don't know what's going to go on and that. Yeah, when they closed the board, yeah, when you hear things uh, like close the borders. borders, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. And it just, I, and I knew, and I knew then. If I didn't go home, I won't see my family again. Like for for a long time, you know what I mean. I didn't I didn't know what was going to happen to people, yeah. and it was probably the first time I've ever made a decision based on what I need to do for my family. If I'm honest with you, and Wigan came up with an offer that was like the best offer I've, I've ever had in rugby. And as a player, obviously, you don't want to make decisions based off on based off on obviously money wise and stuff like that. But for me at the time, I didn't know what was going on. No one ever wanted to be back with the families in COVID, and mm. you know what I mean. And, it's a short, it's a short life, and I didn't want to not be there with my granddad. You know what I mean, and stuff like that. And I thought I'm not going to waste my time here, not knowing if I can go see my family when I want, I want to go, I want to be, I want to be there. You know what I mean? I yeah. did see my little girl for eleven months, and I was like, Fuck I'm not, yeah, I'm not doing this. Like it's, it's too much for me to do. So then, made a decision. Had a little bit of obviously fallout back here and there with, with the Canberra. Obviously, they they didn't want me to go and whatnot, but it was a decision based on what I wanted to do for my family. It wasn't based on with rugby or all that. I, I took that out of it because in my head, obviously, I wanted to play rugby over here, but it, it is what it is. And my, my, my little girl needed his da needed a dad, like, and that, were, and that were the biggest thing for me at the time. It wasn't about, obviously, John Bateman as a player and, and John Bateman where he wanted to be. feel about, obviously, John Bateman as a dad. And, and yeah. I don't care what anyone says, John Bateman as a dad is more important, to, more important than John Bateman as a rugby player, so. I think, I think as well, like, to, to add into that, like, 
you know, m most listeners and viewers w probably won't understand like just how much an in injury can affect mm. your thinking. And 100%. just li sat here speaking to you, like incompetence around an injury, preventable incompetence, yeah. like missing things. Like, so it's, it's a nightmare. Like, because uh, anytime a, a player's injured, the first question they ask is, when, when am I back? Yeah. The second question they ask is, how can I make it quicker? Yeah. So, 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 yeah. And that, and you're going, well, how can I make it quicker? You fucking miss something. Yeah. Like now, you're making it longer. Yeah. And that, hundred percent. Um, like I, I had a huge a, level yeah. of anger. Yeah, massive. Like, and obviously, I quite quite a lot of, lot of arguments all with like physios at camp at time, and I, obviously they want their fault. They, they, like, yeah. They're not. They want. They, they want them, but. In my head, like you said, then I'm like, how do I do it? How do I get back quicker? I want to play rugby. Like, I yeah. get paid to play rugby. I don't get paid to train. I, like, I, that's, mm. that's my job. And it was just hard. And I mean, obviously, fiance, fiance now, and she, she, I just literally got with her a couple of months before that. So she was there through it all as well. And like, she was good for me. Like, obviously, having someone, having someone there, she more or less looked after me really. I was in a sling for fucking 16 weeks. Like yeah. it's a long, it's a long time, and I couldn't do all. And I've another family; uh, they, they helped me massively and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was. It, it was at the time I didn't know if I could like because do, do, do it was saying that the surgeon was saying something about I don't know if you'd be able to take contact, and I was like, oh, like what are you on about? Like I don't know if I can take contact. Like and in my head, I'm like, like forever. Want, yeah, yeah, I'm like I won't be able to play again. Like obviously, it all, all got mixed up in what they were supposed to be doing and stuff, and I was just like, what is going on here? So it, it was a bit of a make sure of everything put together and I was just like I'm over this like I'm I want to go yeah. back I want to be with my family yeah and stuff like it's scary it's obviously I was only what 20 26 27 yeah. at the time and I'm like Mate, well, yes. I've just come off back the best year I've ever had in my life like and this year is probably looking to be the worst you know what I mean like and I might have to retire you know what I mean like I was just like what oh, yeah. yeah I was just like because in my head I'm, you think the worst don't you naturally as a player like you don't you just know in between everything you're either mm. good or you're shit like, yeah you know what I mean like and yeah, at the time it was it was scary to fair and my head roll over the place and, and whatnot and yeah, I just wanted to be back home. I yeah, just wanted I, to be back home. And I think that like anybody hearing that story would, would do exactly the same. Yeah. Like the, when you think about the level of anxiety of yeah. around COVID, no one no one no one had a clue. Yeah. And, 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 and to be home. fair, a lot of people made like went yeah. went back. Or or, or 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 move back to the original like yeah. home. You go back to what's what's comfort or mm. comfort for you in the fact of obviously you don't know what's going on. You don't know you don't know when things are going to open back up and you can't waste the well, time. Well, realistically, yeah. if you'd have stayed, like you'd, you'd be looking at two years yeah. minimum. Literally, George Williams, I think he stayed, and I think it got to him in the end. Like obviously, yeah. that's a big reason why George went back. Like it was just his head space. Like he just wanted to be back home. His missus, she'd not seen her family. I think it I think it ended up being around two years. Yeah. Other people come out, oh, well, it's this, it's like, like you don't know the full story. You know yeah. I mean? If you look at it, if you dig deep and listen to stuff instead of just taking clippets of little bits and bats, you understand the full story. But yeah, that was one of the big decisions for myself. Mm. And, and, and if someone of this, perhaps, I don't know, I, I always look at this about like mentality. If you go, in two years, you will be able to. Yeah. But you weren't getting those promises. And two years yeah. is a fucking long time anyway. Yeah. If someone said a year, but if someone said three years, but you, What's worse than that is the yeah. this will be going on for, yeah. for who knows however long. Mm. Like we might, like, like it's, could be a five year. Pro yeah. yeah, you just don't know. Yeah. And with that as well, I, I will do to get an operation. Like you can't have an op yet because you can't go in hospital. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? Like it's like, everything's like you have waiting list. And I'm like, <laughs> like I, I, yeah. what we're gonna do? So like I was just in limbo with everything, and I was just like, and like I said, for me, like going back to like the little girl, were like. She was like, Dad, I want you to come home. And I'm like, oh, okay, sweet. Yeah, how I can you know? Yeah. How, how can and you know? Like I said, Wigan came for me. We had Chris Roglinski, credit to him. He put his neck out and he was like, right, we, 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 we want you to come back home and blah, blah, blah. And end up sorting a deal out of it with them. So probably as well, that, speaking of comfort, I was going back to the mm. comfort of obviously knowing where I was going back to and people around the place and understand, you know what I mean? And we can actually look to get excited yeah, yeah. about something for the first saying, time yeah. in a very long time. Yeah. Like your whole mindset attitude yeah. shift because i'm going to some somewhere where i and and familiarity yeah. and knowing and versus this un, unstable so and yeah. and obviously being with your family as well i guess what i wanted to ask you about moving as well there's kind of a bit of a media wash up and a bit yeah. of an argument um and some things maybe taken out of context 
was that frustrating for you because you obviously you know the full story and perhaps you don't want this being leaked or spoken about publicly when it's such a personal matter yeah they just i just felt like there were a lot of like shit stirring if i'm honest with you like one person saying another thing like i said earlier i'm taking little bits of what i've said and twisting it with a little bit of what someone else said i was just like i knew the full story i knew why i wanted to go back i knew what it was about people blaming the agent and whatnot and End of the day, my agent works for me. I pay, I pay him, he doesn't pay me. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I wanted to go back home. I told him to go get a deal for me back home. Yeah. And that was it. And people saying he's asked to leave numerous times and stuff like that. And I knew it was coming out of the place where I was at the time, so it was pissing me off even more because I'd only told people there that story. Oh, so it was coming out from. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and the people I were up there, I'd only, I'd only people I spoke to, so. Like was that it. disappointing for you? Yeah, because I, because like I said, like I've got still got a good relationship with, with people there and stuff like that. But I, I had just had the best year of my life in that place, and I was like, it's it's an uncertain time of time of everyone's life. Like, mm. what why you know what I mean? Like, why twist it and why cause cause loads of shit when I'm I literally there's no need to be. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, and I get, as well at the time they they came to me and offered me a contract, but then said, oh. We can only sign you on base of if someone else goes well. If they don't go well, we'll get rid of them. And I'm like, well, listen, mate. Like, oh, really? Yeah. No, like, how, how am I supposed to like sign a contract based on that? Like, oh, like that don't work. So know? sorry. So th we'll, we'll extend, yeah, an upgrade. Yeah, but it's going to be based on if someone else goes. If what, someone, yeah. if it's player business, X yeah. leave, then that you're going to be you're waited it, on yeah. that your contract. So I, I think you're like a one year deal offered me, but then like you get another two years if someone else. And I'm just like, oh, come on, mate. Like, <laughs> So it's just, it was just hard, it was hard that way, but like I said, it, it all got squashed once I signed a deal. Everyone shakes hands, you move on. Yeah. Like I said, at the end of the day, it's a business and you, you understand that the, the older you get. You, and, you, yeah, you like, do, yeah. but 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 that, but that said, I think, you know, <laughs> there's always games getting played and, 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 and reputations and, and image yeah. is important. And I guess for a club like Canberra, in their defence, they're probably going, well, we need to we need to control this story yeah. because we don't want to see our star player walk out the door or be seen to be walking yeah. out the door. So, Which is understandable. Like, yeah. I get that. Like, I'm, I'm not stupid. Like, I'm, I'm a good... But it affects you on a personal yeah, level. And 100%. then I can only imagine what it's like with you where mm. it's like that with a lot of players, myself included. Like... You're getting calls from yeah. people who you look like your loved ones being like, "What's this?" Yeah, and you're having to explain yeah. yourself, and that ad, like I know for me, that used to piss me. Yeah, but yeah, like that piss yeah, boy yeah. where it's like, bad. Like even like my mum, like because obviously over in England, rugby leagues are not massive. I can do stories coming out every day, and my mum's like, "Oh, John, what's this? Oh, what's that?" And I'm like, <laughs> "You know what I mean?" Like I'm like, "Don't worry about it." And she's like, "How can you not worry about it? They're writing this about you." And I'm like, "Don't worry about it. Like it is what it is." Like, yeah, I, you know what I mean? And it's just like stuff like you just, and that, I suppose obviously, I will be acting to people on Twitter and stuff like I'm writing stuff, and that's probably me wanting to say like, I'm like, listen, understand like that will me being frustrated and me being angry at the situation that, that we're in. You know what I mean? And, and probably people continue it, but then like everything's been sorted and you're just like, come on, mate, give yeah. it over. Like, it's, it's one day, but you have to laugh about it. Like, people are what they are. Like, <laughs> opinions are I always say yeah. opinions are for free. That's why people have them. Like, so, yeah, they are. Yeah. Like, and it, if, it won't, if people had to pay for opinions, they wouldn't have an opinion, would you? They won't, would they? <laughs> like, and, like, I That's always a, say it. Like, like it's a fair way of looking at yeah. things, mate. Um, so you, you do go back and not to. To, to gloss over the, the two years that, that you had at Wigan, but um, you, you are back there, but then now you're back here in the NRL. And like I say, I want to pay respect to, to, to what you what you achieved at Wigan at that time there. Mm. But then the decision to, to move back, um, what was it about the, the Tigers and what was the draw card to come to the NRL? Um, unfinished business a bit. Um, Obviously, like I said, I left on the basis of making a decision based on my family. So what they needed at the time, what I wanted, what I thought was the right decision. My daughter, what she needed. Um, yeah, and just having that opportunity. Again, obviously, I had a couple of different clubs coming in, to, in for me. Um, but I chose to go to Tigers. Um, for me, I suppose I've never been in that, apart from Bradford at the time when I was there, like the, un the underdog mm. position. Um, I don't. I, me being me, I probably enjoyed the fact of being like, right, come on, let's go. Right, we've got a job on here. Went back to Wigan, comfort zone, in my comfort zone for two years. 
probably didn't get the best out of myself because I was in my comfort zone. Don't get me wrong, won a, won a Challenge Cup, which I've always dreamed of winning, obviously, you know what I mean? We ended up winning that. Like I said, Wigan, Wigan did what they did for me and, and whatnot, but I, I, I stand by it now. Like, if you're in your comfort zone, you're not getting the best out of what, 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 you, what you are and stuff like that. I thought I'd probably find myself in my comfort zone now. I wasn't getting pushed and I wanted I wanted the opportunity to come back and I got presented with that and going to the West Tigers, um, obviously bottom, bottom of the league at the time and obviously I wanted to go over there, come over here, sorry, and obviously make a difference if I want to Like I probably, going obviously up, moving on to last year and, and, what, and obviously the year that we had and shit year, obviously didn't win that many games and, and whatnot and... But for me, I probably, I can all hardly say that I've learned more from last year than what I've ever had in my whole career. I, I generally, like, through, through the facts of the up and downs, uh, you playing a winning side, there's half of the stuff that should be looked at don't get looked at. You playing a losing side, the stuff that don't need to be looked at get looked at, get magnified. You go from starting the season like this, looking at everything to start, to finishing it like that because you, you focus on yourself and you try to forget about everything around you. And, you start nitpicking it. Am I going to bed on time? Is that why we're not? You know what I mean? Like, because everything gets magnified and oh, every man. environment starts. You know what I mean? Picking on little stuff to try and get better. Because yeah. that's, that's what you want to do. But when you strip it right back and just sit back, you're like, oh, it's not. It's not all that. Like, it's not all that. It's about the base of obviously training hard, working hard together, getting getting the tight bond together, understanding obviously how we need to play, getting a getting obviously and in, what was how would I put it? An environment where people want to be, obviously, big big things like that. Yeah. Getting, where people want to turn up yeah, and like, yeah. like having an understanding of how your team plays a game, like uh, you know, having an identity to how you play mm. the game, not just one week play like this, one week play like that. And mm. You learn a lot more. Like it's obviously me growing up as well. You, I suppose you look at a lot more as well, being a bit older. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting what you say there because I always think about that. Like, and I've been involved in some teams with things haven't been going well in the. Uh, analysis on it but yeah. you, you look at where you can actually make a bigger difference yeah. like focus your resources on that mm. and then but sometimes the nitpicking starts and Literally, yeah. some some of these things are like less than 0.001 percent mm. which may make a difference at, yeah. the, but let's focus our energy on what's actually going to make a difference yeah. to performance on the weekend and and, and that's some yes. of those big things Massive. like we don't need a meeting about whether our day off yeah. is minus two or minus three. Yeah. So basically, if you're playing on a Friday, the team's day off would be either a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Yeah. We're going to have this big debate about what's better yeah. for, for it performance. Turns into a debate, doesn't it? Because yeah. you're nitpicking. Oh, like, yeah, well, yeah. you know, I've yeah. heard that. Th and yeah, it's yeah. always like, yeah. I've heard that Melbourne so do it like this, yeah, yeah. but Roosters do it yeah, minus yeah. Yeah. What are we going to do? Literally. Well, how about we do, don't, who gives a fuck? Yeah. Let's focus our energy on what, what, on what actually can drive outcomes because we're wasting time here mm. like completely energy wasting well, time focus, and like, it, yeah everything like you just and you find yourself you do that continuously it just burns you out like it does yeah like it generally burns you out like you go home and you're like mm. i like, can that's what it gets to like you, you get to that point and obviously oh, we're going to change the warm-up yeah shit like that like, like it's a bit too like, five minutes too long in it you're like come on like it like, make a difference yeah <laughs> yeah like you know, maybe it does yeah. and, 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 well it does it, but it's yeah, the, slight, group, yeah. the, the slightest of slightest of slightest of edges. Yeah. But let's put some <laughs> yeah, some effort into w where we can see a bigger improvement much quicker. Yeah, massive. And then, then, you know what, when we're circling around the top four, we can start, start yeah. to wonder. 100%. Should we knock that? Knock that we'll pull it back a little yeah, bit. Should we change so. that hamstring stretch? Yeah. Yeah, yeah <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> a complete yeah, load of bollocks. Um, in terms of... You being at the Tigers now, what are you looking to achieve there? Success. What's that? What does success, success look looks like? like? Creating, an, like I said, creating an environment that where the winning culture is normal, like, which becomes normal. At the moment, it's, it's it's a losing culture. We can't hide behind anything. Like that, that's how it's been. We finished bottom of the league for the last two years, and it's a, it's a losing culture. We need to turn that on its head. We need to understand what winning looks like and what winning feels like. Bringing in people like. Uh, just in all of them, being in, involved in environments like that obviously understands how to win. Massive for us. Jerome next year, massive for us. I think um, it's just, I'm, I'm making sure the kids, and the, the younger the younger lads of the squad understand what, what winning looks like and how it feels and what it feels like to be a team and, and obviously going in the right direction. And for myself, I want to be, I want to be, 
I want to be the best version of myself to fair on and off the field. I want to obviously as you go as you go older, you obviously you, try, you, you realize that you, you, it's not just about you. You, you mm. realize you, you're a big influence on the people around you. And probably for myself, it's understanding that and working working on that working on myself. And like I said last year, I came over with a little bit of an injury, got it all sorted. I got it sorted this year. Find myself in a good position. Want to get back fit, get back playing, and I feel like. A, Myself as as an individual, I feel like where I'm at is probably one of the best places where I've been at, and understanding my body and understanding my head and understanding everything that comes with it. And yeah, I think feel like I'm a, in a real good place and really excited for this year. If I'm honest with you, I guess on on your own personal growth, are you finding that influencing those young lads and saying like, I'll show you what winning's about. Mm. I'll, I'll show you what the difference between preparing to to play NRL or or you know you might have aspirations to to play yeah. five games well no we need aspirations to you and come and play to win 100 like and yeah. that helps you develop your leadership skills and and pushes you further yeah. as a player because also it, it's on you a little bit now isn't it yeah. i can and that's what comes with the title doesn't it, it comes with the, what i've done previously what, I've, what i'm doing now obviously everything else and I, I suppose going back to that as well mate it's for me when people say it's what does winning look like oh yeah we'll win a game it's being consistently winning, like consistency is to me, like if you're consistently a good player, you're consistently, like you you are a good player. Mm. Like if you can do it week in, week out, you can produce the same stuff week in, week out. You, you're a good player, you know what I mean, in my mind. And that consistently winning week in, week out builds the environment where where you know, you, you understand your game, you understand, like going back to Wigan, what I said, we knew in 2018 we weren't going to lose. You, yeah. you know what I mean there's a, there's a different feeling around the place when you get that feeling and it's building that it's, like I said some kids that are coming into our team don't even have a, don't even know what the routine is before yeah. a game yet, you know what I mean it's yeah. helping them with little stuff like that letting them know like oh hey, we, we're here to help we're here to talk to her. but obviously we're here to play rugby we're here to win games and that's what it, it comes down to that's what we're getting judged on at the end of the day and that's what we need to be as best at so. yeah well mate you, like you Everywhere you've been, you, you've you've had that impact. Obviously, last year at the Tigers was a was a later yeah. start, but um, I'm excited to see what what you can bring to the table this year. And I think you know you, you look at really what should be an exciting time yeah. for the club with, with with new coach, like legend of the club, um, new at back backroom staff. Um, sorry, front front of the um, office staff. Yeah. So should be good. Mm. Yeah, should be good. Exciting, like I said. For myself and just looking forward to getting out there now. Bit of a late start. I'll, I'll just give me pre season and back running. And like I said, the boys are ripping in on shore. Every other team will say the same thing. Obviously, pre season pretty is sim pretty similar in every way, obviously. But we're all looking forward to this year. We're all looking forward to getting out there and yeah. showing what it's about. Yeah, nice. Well, um, John, just before we, we, we wrap things up, obviously, we, um, we played together for England um, and I want to just quickly ask you about what can England achieve? Can England get that World Cup? Yeah, for me, mate, um, obviously Wayne being in charge now, which is a massive thing for me. Um, just having him there, obviously, I've been successful under, under him. I'd probably say he, he turned me into a player that, obviously, I, I was scraping the surface a little bit. Obviously, when I came from Bradford, I was young, I was raw. He changed me, he changed yeah. me into, obviously, a proper player type thing. but. Going off the back of this year, what, what playing against it, playing in the Tonga Tonga um, Test series this year, going back to obviously the 2017 World Cup, that's probably the closest bond this this series that I've had with an England team since mm. the 2017. So young young players coming in, you've got likes of Jack, you've got likes of Mikey Lewis, you've just got some young kids coming through that are, that are some that, are, that have got a bit about them, got a bit of talent, but. They're, they're tough as well. They've got they've got that rugged edge, edge about them, which I think is a is an international, international player you need, and I think even more so as an England player. That's what that's what we're built on. That's what that's what we are about. We're about being tough and and coming through this other side of the team. So I think building up for the next World Cup injuries injuries obviously aside, I think we've, we've got a real good chance of putting his, his best foot forward and going out there and winning the World Cup. I think when he said, I think it'll be his last it'll be his last thing as yeah. a job. So I think. Everything, everything together. I think we know what we're about, and probably if you look at the likes of me, George, and stuff like, probably maybe the last last World Cup for ourselves. So I think, I think as a as a whole, I think it looks very positive for us. I think um, 
it should be good. It yeah, should be good. this should be exciting this mm. next couple of years. Man, I'm really looking forward to it. And like I say, with the start of the interview, we stood next to each other, arm arm in arm. Like yeah. it's some of my well, no, my, my favourite memories from from my career yeah. of, of playing for England. We had such a fantastic time, which um, we we spoke about on a different podcast. But um, I was going to ask you about your off field life, but you've you've touched on that, mate, and I think that shows that. A massive part of who you are which perhaps a lot a lot of people don't realize and i, I appreciate you sharing yeah, that because think, yeah yeah massive i think obviously going moving forward the off-field stuff i think um my missus obviously at the moment she's been a massive part of obviously me growing up i suppose i think obviously realizing she's she's obviously she's one of them people that i'm i'm like right i'm doing this she's like well like chill stop just think <laughs> about it a minute and i'm like what do you mean like and she she pulls me back sometimes but she's likes to go sometimes but she'll She's obviously taught me how to just like just relax a little bit and just chill out and think about what I'm gonna do first before doing it and and you know what I mean and stuff and obviously having my little fella as well. <clears throat> I think when I had my little girl, I was still a kid myself. Like I was still young. I was only 16 and like at the time I was still I was still living my life. You know what I mean? I was yeah. still I was still be I was still being a teenager and whatnot. And I think having my little boy now at the moment, he's obviously taught me how to be. Like obviously, I've, it's, I'm, I'm together with with his mum and obviously growing up and stuff like that. It's, it's a big part of obviously who I am at the moment and stuff like that. And yeah, I think it's it's made me grow up quite a lot. If I'm honest, it made me more mature and yeah, it's exciting. You know what I mean? Like it's it's good it's good to be living that life. Yeah, yeah, nice. It's it's good to hear you do that. I guess probably before we get into the the, um, the four questions for for each and every guest. Um, what about life after rugby? But what are you hoping to achieve? I have noticed, John, that you're on uh, your, your social media presence has, has now you know, transferred to LinkedIn as well. Which, yeah, I don't know how uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all over the place. I'm um, keep yeah. waiting for you to yeah. post. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm all over the place. Um, yeah, um, I've got, I started up with, you know, no one will know this, but I started off a cleaning business in Bradford, um, just like doing like cleans and stuff. I'm, I'm a very... I, no one will probably knows this apart from if I'm, I'm very an very org organized clean person like at home if oh, yeah. yeah very very like <laughs> seriously yeah, yeah, seriously that's when this is my missus it doesn't miss like, she... cl like clean or, or everything's got a place both, they're both yeah both I mean like my wardrobe's very colour coordinated and stuff like is it yeah <laughs> I'm a very <laughs> like I'd hate you to come in my house oh, <laughs> I'd, I'd I wouldn't come. even let you in my house with that no Man, I'd be taking a pair of your, yeah. your shoes yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd just quickly just on some of the favourite memories is you're obviously Wait, very what have you got on anyway oh, 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 oh. where's your DCs my DC, <laughs> man, I, I had to throw those DCs out I'm not surprised about 20 year old Man, tell you what if those shoes could, could talk, talk yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now the um, you, you you are very fashion conscious. Like yeah. you, you wear all the oh, yeah, like all the designer smart. gear. Looks looks smart. smart. Okay. <laughs> I call it smart. <laughs> clean, clean mate, and smart. You look really smart, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really smart. Um, but yeah, I, obviously there's, there's a danger that comes with that. Like I I used to wear my bucket hat. Yeah, I'd stop taking it to England camp because people think it'd be funny <laughs> to steal. But then again, people have very expensive trainers on, very yeah. expensive shoes. You know, well. What what's a clumsy foot on the top of a white pair of Yeezys? You know, <laughs> used to do it all the time. Yeah. Used to get me all. Used to turn up in brand new trainers and John, what are they? Where have you got them from? Boom! <laughs> like fuck! Used to fuming. It took me ages to wash as well. You can't wash them normally. Either. You have to take them like specialists to wash them as well. So. Just throw them in the washing machine. You mate, you can't. You think some of the stuff like that. Like you've got to put there. Yeah, mm. <laughs> I, I used to enjoy. Like, like say someone on the massage table, yeah, take their shoes off, find them, get them, and be like, here, can someone sign these for me? <laughs> I was just to cut this fan yeah, outside I'd once. Fucking, I'd kick off if you did that to me. Fucking you know, hell. Especially my Yeezys. They were, they're, yeah, good pair as well, man. But, yeah, yeah. sorry, you've, you've started the yeah. game. Yeah, so you're a clean freak. Yeah, yeah so, so you started I just cleaning. thought, oh, why not? I can know a little bit about it. Into that stuff and... Yeah, just well, start. In, what do you mean? Hang on, I'm you're into in, cleaning. Clean, I, I like. Well, you know, you like you, you got your products. It's not just like whatever. Yeah, it's, yeah. You've got yeah. your I've primo. Got people working for like I've got. Yeah, no, but you got your primo products. Like you know what wear. Yeah, I know what clean. Yeah, stuff on that like back home and stuff like I like. Yeah, I like it. So I, I just like stuff being clean. So like I like oh well, I take an interest in it. Why not do it a little bit? So they started up a business over there. So. Yeah, that's got its own little. Just takes care of itself as well. Yeah. It, what don't don't cost much to set up. You just buy your products. Obviously, you need to clean and stuff like that. So, and just get unlike I said of 
got a profile obviously in social media and that, so why not use it? And yeah, nice. It's, it's a good, it's a good tool to use and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I'm, probably as well. I want to start doing a little bit of coaching. I do a little bit here and there, but I want to probably get into that a little bit. Um, I've always said like I enjoy, I enjoy rugby, like I enjoy the game and stuff like that. I'm probably just giving a little bit back to. To probably, to probably more so as well to save kids coming through, understanding obviously different kids and different environments and, and growing up and whatnot, and probably just helping them out as well a little bit. Just cause like I said earlier on, like coming from different backgrounds and stuff, it's, it's always good to put an hand out sometimes and be like, right, oh, I understand you, mate. Like I, I've been in the same background or I come from the same stuff, and just being able to help people out as well, and, and hopefully give them a career in, in the game. Obviously, that's given me so much as well. Yeah, well, I could definitely see you making a, a huge mm. impact on on young players' lives. I think that would be amazing if you yeah. if you get into that. But um, yeah, just to, to to finish off, I'm amazed at the fact that you're a clean freak as well. <laughs> yeah, not no. expecting that. Yeah. Um, this is it, that she's not. <laughs> she's like scruff. <laughs> I'm I'm a I'm a slob. I really am. Uh, dream spine, Batty. Dream so spine. there's no real. Rules or regulations to this? I'm sure you've done a lot of homework and a lot, yeah, given us a lot of thought. Think about it. It's number one, Sam Tonkins. Yeah, Sam Tonkins for sure. Um, and where we're going, number six. Six. Played with some good sixes. Jack you don't have to play with them. Just yeah, play with them. Jack Oil. Oh, what? Jack, you've George, you've George admired Williams. For Williams. Me. Yeah, Williams for me. Probably, I understand. I, I'm probably going to say people that I play because you realize yeah. how good of a player, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, yeah, Williams, seven. His old mate, Matty Smith, would be up there because he, <laughs> he could win a game. He, he could also have a drink as well. Yeah. Could Ooh, he? Tom, yeah, Tommy Luai as well. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take him. Put <laughs> oh, both in. Oh. <laughs> both, both, yeah. To Tommy and Tommy and Smeags. And number nine. <sighs> Some tough ones. Mickey. Mickey, Mickey Mack, yeah. yeah. Thought you might yeah. go in. I've got, yeah, the Mickey, obviously the Josh, happy at the moment. Yeah. Played with, played with some very good nines. Played with some very good nines. Yeah, Mickey would probably be there. Yeah, mm. but yeah, most definitely be there. Yeah, Done nice. A little, little it's a very, very English feel, Tompkins, Williams, yeah. Yeah. Smeags. Yeah. Big I suppose as well, you look back on like the, the times you the game, yeah. you know, one, you know, the like, big, yeah, yeah, yeah. Smeagol won, won us that many games. Mm. Could have a drink as well, so always helps him. It? <laughs> it's, good, it's good drinking crew as well. That. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. in. laughs> um, right, if 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 rugby didn't exist, Batty, what, what do you think you'd be doing? What's a kid from Bradford doing if if our sport just wasn't there for you as a kid? Uh, <laughs> Could be a few things here. Um, you know what? Funnily enough, it's, when I when I was just about to sign on for Bradford, I applied to be a fireman. Like I tried to, I applied to be do that, like in college. Like obviously when I was sixteen, I got accepted into it. For, it's like a public service course. One, yeah. I applied to do that, but then literally day after, I got I got put on to signing full time at Bradford, so I got rid of it early. Well, yeah. Do you reckon you'd have been on the calendar? Uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the art like that. <laughs> nah, it's not me, like. Nah. No, it's not it me. It's, like, you know, it's you. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You'd be all over that. Like. You'd be high, yeah. <laughs> Wait, where's your house? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah so I applied, to, I applied to do that. Um, yeah. Probably I'd try getting to some other spot. I enjoy, like, boxing and stuff like that. I, can, mm. I enjoy watching stuff like that. I don't know how I'd go. Someone did you might. do any train? Did you do any training? What box like boxing training? I, did, I you know what I did do quite a lot of UFC training, like wrestling and stuff like that when I when I was back home. I will. I grew up. I had a lot of fights when I grew up. So <laughs> when I got yeah, my training, tra yeah, training, I enjoyed that. Yeah, live yeah, practice. Yeah, I just thought I just probably won't like getting it back in face. I'd lose my head probably. You know mm. what I mean? Like, would you do a um, a boxing match? Probably not. Like, not for me. Like. <laughs> <laughs> not for me. Like. UFC, yeah, I'll do that. For oh, you me. do? You, do you take on someone? Uh, yeah, and I know. Play in the yeah. UFC. I did, I did quite a lot of back home. There's a gym in Bradford, pretty good to a fair. Like, have some good kids coming out of it and whatnot. We did quite. We do quite. Do quite. It's, it's hard. Like, you go in thinking. Well, yeah. You, you go in thinking, oh, like, yeah, I'm just strong. Like, I'll be all right. 
fucking hell, getting tired of knots in the first couple of weeks. Really? I was like, fucking hell, what's going on here? I was like little like 70 kg people, like strangling me and I was just like getting that angry I was just like get off me so no yeah I enjoy stuff like competing in it I yeah. suppose like it's anything that's competing mm. um, but yeah it's probably down down that avenue I'd probably say yeah nice uh, a sliding doors moment <sighs> couple of, a couple to um, having a little girl at 16 was a big thing for me yeah um, yeah took me out a lot of shit like we are doing that I probably shouldn't have been doing with my mates and that back home how uh, was that as a 16 year old fuck to... it, man. Just scary it's yeah like scary more the fact of like i didn't tell anyone for seven months like i didn't tell my mum about so yeah they, no one knew um, be hard, like be hard yeah. like how, how I was still a kid, do you like, process yeah. like, you are a kid yeah, like i was i just didn't know i as like yeah i just didn't know what to do me, 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 obviously millie's millie's mum chloe um her mum marie um sadly passed away not long ago she she at the time were trying to trying to send messages to like letters to my mum that's how old it was that's how it is got she was trying to send let, posting like letters through the post to tell her to ring her obviously to try and tell her that obviously what was going on and i were intercepting her and ripping them up because <laughs> like, really? like, i just thought it was gonna go away. Like, kid, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like it was just like ignore it that long it'll go away and yeah no it was just hard like it was just it was weird, but I had a good family around me. My, mm. fam my family were class. Like my mum, yeah. my mum looked after Millie. Like you know what I mean when I wanted to do stuff and whatnot, and that always helped and stuff like. That. And I suppose not, looking at her back now, like she's like my best mate. Like yeah. now, you know what I mean? Like I FaceTime her, have a laugh with her. Like she's aiming aim me for on certain moments. She's she's good with her. You know what I mean? So stuff yeah. like that, like it's it's massive. I'll probably say that obviously. Having my little fella as well now, obviously the mm. other side of it. That's that's a, that's another thing. Growing up, I think a bit more. Um, and career wise, signing signing for Wigan was a big move for me. Obviously, it put you on put me on world stage. Obviously, as in being like being in spotlight mm. a bit more. Um, Be interesting that like what would have happened mm. if if like I don't know Bradford have had this yeah, shit together I, I or, thought, or not uh, gone into yeah. admin. I got I would have. Like f more so probably signing for Wigan as well. Like it took me away from Bradford. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you know what it's like going back home. You see your old mates. Mm. Not disrespecting my mates. We're all doing the same shit. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, I go home at Christmas. I'll see them, but but then I'll see them for like a couple of days, and they'll all go back to work. And yeah, I, you know what I mean? They'll lift up weekend to go out for a drink and that. And like I'm like, it took me away from that. Like yeah, like, I mean, it gave me that opportunity opportunity to be to probably not grow up in Bradford, being on loads of money. And probably falling into that, you know what I mean, a little bit, which mm. could have been easily possible if I, if I had stayed at Bradford. But at the time, like I said, got offered mad overs, been on loads of money, you know what I mean? Like, I quite possibly could have got sucked into that a little bit, but going to Wigan took me away from that a little bit and whatnot, you know what I mean? It's yeah. given me another a little bit of a direction, obviously, in life. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, the most interesting person that you've met? Interesting. You'll be up there, mate. <laughs> bit different. <laughs> I won't lie. <laughs> Very, yeah, a bit different. You, I'd probably say, yeah, yeah you are probably up there. Sean Williams is a different person, like, very full on. Like, like you have to be on, like, work show out. Like, we used to go, I used to go in every morning and say, Morning, mate, how are you? And he's like, I'm not, mate. I'm Sean. No way, mate. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, fucking hell. But yeah, so like, shit like that used to like, um, you just, you've got, oh shit, you've got to be on. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, say for instance, I'm morning, I am out, hey, you're right. I'm like, where now? Like, because obviously you say mate to everyone, don't you? Yeah. It's a, it's a common, you know what I mean? Stuff like that, yeah. So, but when is when is good, because I suppose I like the fact of obviously how he thinks as well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's always like, say for instance, like, why is that ball being knocked over? And he's like, oh, I don't know. He's like, no, well, there's a reason for it, isn't there? Like, it's, there's always a reason for something, like, and they'll rip it and they'll shred it down to the fine margins of being like but also the, the body point of it you know what i mean like mm. i like the thought i like his thought process how he thinks and stuff like he's he's been good for me he's helped me out massively and he's still a close mate obviously and a, and a coach obviously on the national team as well so yeah he's um i've only had a little bit to do him, do with him and he yeah he's a fascinating character yeah, you'd and have loved, you'd have loved to play for yeah. him i, I, I don't both. think it's any secret as to why he's been so yeah. successful we're good fellas as well you know yeah I mean? so do you think he might come over here. I don't know, mate. To be fair, I think he's doing well for himself. He's doing yeah. quite a lot of speaking and whatnot over over in England now and stuff like that. And I think when you get to a point, if maybe a couple of years ago, if, if mm. he'd probably been approached properly, 
um, regarding the job and whatnot, and maybe it'd be an interest, I suppose. I always say he's got his dream job coach in his country, which, mm. which is massive, and I suppose you can only take it to a point where you only enjoy your family life and stuff yeah. like that. He's got best of both worlds on him now at the moment. Mm. Like. So good on him. Let him enjoy himself and, and what he's doing. Yeah, nice. All right, well, Batty, that... Um just about wraps us up, mate. I've uh, really enjoyed chatting with you. I've had you. I've had you on the double shift today yeah, as well. So, um, thanks for that, man. Well, um, I appreciate you um, sharing your story with us, mate. It's um, it, it's pretty f- fascinating to to hear about. Well, you being a clean freak as well that, that surprised <laughs> me. But but also, I think you know the, the, the man behind the player as well. Like yeah. the, there's more to you than that. Mm. That that aggressive style back rower that you and. You know, the drinking runs and the person that drags their team. I think I, I always find it interesting tapping into people's psyche and their, their mindset. And like you say, that mindset of, well, I want to be the best player at the back end of the game. That's yeah. huge, but also uh, an insight into the, the person you are away from the field. So it's been fantastic, no. Batty. And wishing you all the very best at the Tigers for this year and obviously with England for the next few years as well. Cheers, mate. Thanks for having me.